Hey everybody, welcome to Pub Crawlers. I'm Matthew. I'm Kevin. Kevin. And we got Mr. Craig back hey, with hey, us. Hey, <laughs> Empty handed. No, no, man, I got the goods and the cooler. This is a beer we want as cold as we can get. You get the beer. Bud Light? I'm gonna get the glasses. No. Alright. Um. A uh, Hogarden. No. Hogarden is a brothel down in the French Quarter. <laughs> what? This is a Belgian wit beer called Hogarden. <laughs> Hogarden. Because, oh, okay, cool. Hogarden. Yeah. No? Too no, much. This, this is Hogarden. It'd be multiple <laughs> R's. Yeah. This Not multiple A's. 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 <laughs> yeah, okay, let's move on. Moving right. on. Keep going, Craig. So, uh, this is. This is my staple beer. This is my flagship. This is my... Your favorite beer. Yeah, it's my, probably my favorite okay. beer. I go to the store, I get two six-packs of some random stuff. This is always in my fridge. This so is, is this one of your six-packs that you buy, or you buy two of the six-packs of Who Garden, just and then two more six-packs? I'm, I'm just okay. saying, I'm just trying to this is one of my all-time favorite beers. Okay, very cool. So um, why is it one of your favorite beers? Is there like a history behind it, or...? We're gonna take, well, I can throw you some history facts. So this was made... Bring it on. Okay, Who Garden is a village. In Belgium, uh, this beer was made by the monks in the 1400s, 1445, if you want to be exact. And it, it was it's a very old beer. So there's probably like 2,000 people in this village, mm -hmm. and for every 20 people or so, there was a brewery. Okay, wow, it was a thing then. Jeez, that's a um, lot of beer. And it lasted till about the 1950s, late 1950s. Uh, oh, good. Lager wow. started becoming popular from 1445 to 1950. Yeah. It's a lot of beer. That's a lot of beer, yeah. Lot of beer. But then lagers started getting more popular, uh -huh. so it kind of fell off. But this guy, Pierre Sellis, lived next to the brewery in the village. Okay. He bought the recipe, but he was a milkman. He had cows and he sold milk. He bought all this mm. from the monks. He kept it alive for about 20 years till fire took down his uh, brewery. And the recipe kind of went away again. And then there was a lot of legal stuff going on. and. Um, with it. it's because since he owned it, even though his brewery burned down, he still had that patent right. Is he that correct? Did, or res he recipe did. rights. And, but it was never it never made that money that it, you know. Right. He made more money, I guess, from milk maybe. Is but it, it it you know people wanted it. He he, he kind of sold the route the rights out to other people and you know like to America and it would never taste the same. But eventually, he had the recipe back down, and the biggest brewing company in the world bought it in bed. And they use Anheuser Busch. Mm -hmm. Really, they still have the original huh. recipe. It's brewed in Hoogarden. Oh Hoogarden. wait, so that's their only place. To, so yeah. Anheuser Busch may own it, but they don't brew it in America. No. This is still so brewed. We get it here because they own it, and they oh, import cool. it from Correct. from Hoogarden. Correct. And this, I mean, this beer is brewed. It is enjoyed in over seventy countries. Uh huh. It's just severely. It's about to be enjoyed on pub crawl. It's severely. <laughs> It's severely misunderstood here in the States. Okay. So you so said it's a German wit white beer. A Belgian oh, sorry. wit beer, sorry. which means white. Sorry. So Belgium wit beer, which means just a Belgian white. Yeah. And so what are the equivalent beers, you know? So it's Hugo gotta it's gotta be it's gotta be brewed with twenty five percent wheat malt. Okay. To be considered a Belgian wit. So let's see. Is this, this is this is Similar to a shot top or a blue moon, but I feel like those okay. beers want to aspire to be this. If that makes sense. This was kind of the original. This is definitely the. This is the original. The Belgium OG. Beer. That's why yeah. it's got this throwback bottle. And it actually has instructions on the cool back. little throwback. That's bottle. why I have the glasses. Yeah, and I was about teaching to ask us how you. to. I mean, I'm surprised Kevin. <coughs> I know Kevin loves reading labels and bottles. <laughs> I saw it, but uh, so it I, tells I you it how to pour. Okay, so the proper glass. I was going to ask you. Why are these glasses um, so thick and bulky? Because there's a lot going on. Right. Well, so you explain. have this big opening, so you get all these aromas. Okay. This. Okay. So this is brewed, orange peel, coriander, some spices. Ooh. This big. You're gonna get all that. Okay. It's thick because you know I've said on here many times I don't like drinking beer out of a cold glass, and we're not right now. But this beer is made to be enjoyed ice cold, like stupid cold. Yeah. Get it as cold as you can get it. Okay. Well, so, this beer is pretty cold. So this glass is thick. Uh huh. It's gonna keep insulation. So, so it retains, it retains the coolness. It's gonna keep it cold. Okay, makes sense. The opening, so you get all that orange aroma, 
And you know, and you can put <clears throat> on orange peel, you know, a chunk of orange in there if you want yeah. to. Well, I mean, it's brewed with we don't need orange it. peels already. You don't so. need it to do it. There's so much flavor here. So, Kev, okay, read the back, man. Come on, you like All to right. read. What do we need so, to do? Uh, what do I call? <coughs> so, number one, as, there's actually a, a directions mm -hmm. on this on this bottle. Number one is to chill. Well, we've got that down, Pat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm chilling. Pour two thirds of the bottle. Mm -hmm. Now it's saying to pour directly into the yeah, in, into the glass. Foam it up. Do you really? want to foam it up? Mm -hmm. Interesting. This is on a, so yeah. this beer goes through two cycles of fermentation. So I'm pouring it by two thirds. Yes, perfect. Swirl, swirl that up. It's so. It, this is an unfiltered beer. Two you stages of fermentation. Yeah, and then top it off. I but still tilt. See? They say pour it on the bottom. I still tilt it. I see you left I me stranded. It doesn't matter. You Actually, look. Look how beautiful this we beer is did, We didn't have that glass is ice cold either. That cold is going to... So I was going to say, on my back. you know, on a show a while I'm back... I'm debating if I want to do that. On a show a while back, I talked about having a target in the glass. I would say right. that peak right there would be a good target to yeah. pour. Tell you what, I'm still going to get a little foam. You right. want that head on it. Mm. That's, gonna be, that's all that aroma. That's all that I'm going to pour this. Matt did a great job. Good job, buddy. Hey. Look at me. Proud of you. Okay, I'm not following the rules. Look at me. I mean, it's still a beer. You enjoy beer the way you want to enjoy oh, beer. Oh, look how Dude, beautiful. that's good, man. And you're right. You can smell that orange at coriander, and I'm almost smelling like a banana. You get that in a lot of Belgian beers. Is, am I wrong by saying that? <sighs> look at the color. That's from not being filtered. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's cloudy. Oh, hey, man, a bitch can't see your fingers through the glass. Hell no, he can't. That's right, I can't. That means it's a good beer. <laughs> that means it's a good beer. I gotta let my, uh... And I got No, mm. man. Let all that get on your beard, Kev. Let that You know how long it's gonna take in. to get it out of Boom, my beard? Don't matter, it's worth it. You're, You're right. gonna go home, kiss the old lady. <sighs> She's gonna be like, what is going on? <laughs> the best kiss ever. You have it stuck in your nose hair. You're right, though. This is... An incredible beer. It really is. It's, it's, it's true to the name. It's just being a hoe. It's, it's just <laughs> no. The Belgium Ooh. wit, Kevin. Oh, who Come on, Garner. Oh, who? Who <sighs> Garner. Yeah, it's a Belgium wit. It's a white. But gotcha. no, it's super, super clean, and you can taste every single ingredient. And this That's beer is bottle. older than you can trace your history. Those your family history back. Those monks know what's going on. Oh yeah. This is good mm. stuff. I have a friend who always says, you know, Americans, we grew up playing baseball. Belgians, they grew up brewing beer. Hmm. So you ain't going to get What's too What's their lifespan compared to uh, <laughs> us in America? Well, the health care is probably way really <coughs> better. So. Yeah. Well, well let's, let's not go there. Let's yeah. worry about the beer right it's now. It's a whole other episode. Oh, we're going to make an episode of that? Mm -hmm. All right, but I want to talk about this right now. So you said that Anna's Bush owns this beer now. Mm -hmm. But I want to know, like, between that... You know, period of 1950 until whenever Anna's Bush bought it, was it still relatively popular? Or like, what was, what was it? It was the only deal? popular in Belgium because they only had it in Belgium. That's that's one of the cool things about this beer. You do not see this on TV. You don't no, you see don't. a commercial. You know, there's no billboards yet, and 70 country people celebrate it. It's just <clears throat> here. It's kind of not known. So you can find this. You know, at, you see Stella. You, you see, see yeah. Heineken. Uh -huh. You see those kind of beer. You don't see this, but you have walked by this beer in your supermarket. If it's uh, got uh, a fairly big beer section, you so, just never noticed it. What you got? So I have a, a, a kind of a personal question. You uh -oh. said this is your go-to beer. Mm -hmm. And we did an episode a while back about uh, with Shiner, mm -hmm. and you gave us a, a nice story. Do you mm -hmm. have a story behind Who Guard and how it became your special or favorite uh, beer that you like to drink? Right. I, I I don't I don't remember the first time I drank this. Uh, that I know the beer you're talking about. It was just where I was, where you know it was raining and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it, it stuck out. Um, I I don't remember that with this one. I just know I love this beer. That's I have a friend that buys three cases of this beer a week, and uh, we went to school together. Does he have a liver? <laughs> <laughs> we drank a uh, a lot of beer together in school, and then when we went to college, we kind of separated paths. And we were at a, I was at a you know one of our supermarkets here buying beer one day, and I just happened to run into him. And I had a shopping cart full of Hugh Gordon, and he had a shopping cart. And we're like, hey man, I ain't seen you in a while. I ain't seen you. <laughs> man, you drink Hugh Gordon? I drink Hugh Gordon. And you know, figure. 
The first Hugh Gordon I ever had, I don't remember. But the last Hugh Gordon I had, probably last night. <laughs> right, right now. <laughs> well, now, right before now. today. Yeah. Good point. But, but to your fact though, this is your go-to grass cutting beer. This is my go-to for everything. <laughs> I'm having a crawfish ball with that. I, like I said, I, I still go and I buy, you know, a six pack or two of the latest greatest IPA. Yeah. This is always in my fridge. Mm. It is, is good stuff, Craig. Really enjoy it. So instead of Craig having a milk. Yes, Hugh Garden. In memory of the milkman. Yeah. Oh. Peter, uh, Pierre Sellis. Oh, good guy. for you. All right. Well, look, thank you for bringing this. Thank you for being here. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Go get some Hugh Garden. But before you do that, subscribe <laughs> and watch the next video. Yeah. Keep crawling with us. That's right. Cheers.